Thank you, Yogg's Cast Games, for sponsoring this stream of uh, Trolley Prop Bink, which is a game I have not played, but it sounded really cool. Uh, as a person who uh, had a strong interest in moral philosophy when I first came to YouTube, like I, I li literally used to sit repairing hearing aids, uh, listening to debates on moral philosophy, uh, often between the irreligious and religious. Uh, it, it, I'm, I'm very interested to see how I assess these problems uh, in this game. So Trolley Problem Inc. Your campaign will start after the screen. English, wiggle effect, I don't know what that is. Invert image, CRT effects. Oh, these are on, so I'm assuming that's what they, they want. Um, we'll figure out the uh, audio afterwards. Boom. Oh. There might be Twitch integration. You can even get your audience directly involved if you enable Twitch integration from the menu. Was that, was that back? Did I miss that? Well, regardless, they uh, recommend custom campaign. Oh! Okay, let me just uh, remove this from the screen. I uh, know, oh, uh, play account one, play speed. Did it automatically reduce the play speed? The, there's an optional fast forward button. I think that's good to have on. Yeah? Yeah. So hopefully you'll prompt me now to give Twitch integration stuff. Dislive? Dislive. The following game contains adult themes. It does not contain explicit language, sexual content, horror, or show violence. It doesn't? Choices matter, so please take your time. Player discretion is still advised. Oh. Please sign your name below, showing you understand and agree to endorse every decision you make. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't my real signature, bamboozled game. Welcome to Trolley Problem Inc. Founded to help people travel safely. Oh, oh, oh. All our employees must show three core values. Responsibility, integrity, and respect. With that in mind, let's start your training. Okay. There's a runaway trolley barreling down the railway tracks. On the tracks are five people unable to move. You're next to a lever. If you pull this lever, the trolley will switch to a different set of tracks. However, you notice there is a person on the other track. What do you do? I only have 60 seconds? Like, this is the, the classic trolley problem. And if you ask philosophers, uh, they do in the majority say, pull the lever. Because doing nothing, uh, you know, just makes you effectively morally culpable for killing five people. You know? Um... Inaction is still action in this case. In this hypothetical, of course. In the real world, there'd be a bunch of variables, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, so yeah. Pull lever. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, you guys get to vote? I hope that person's family and friends will forgive you. Oh, vote in chat. Here and here. Oh, and you can't see the thing. I see. Okay, um... Uh, it's hard to find a spot that I can sit. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, okay. Did it show the percentage that voted? Chat, you killed one person, you monster! Oh, Usually we don't expect candidates to kill someone on their first day, but we'll give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. Just think a little more before acting next time. Wow, chat, you murderers! Think you're still gonna block stuff, chat, but we'll see. Okay. So it is you guys who are picking. I can just, like, try to convince you. Okay. So you agreed with 73% of people worldwide. There were 27% of people who wouldn't pull that, really? Huh. If it ain't broke, oh. don't fix it. Mm-hmm. This test will focus on the first principle, responsibility. Here's Polly, 
She's five. Ah, uh, goddamn it! While she loves to play in the sand with her dolls, she dreams of looking after the world. Polly's destiny is to grow up to be a great doctor. More of us should take a leaf out of her book. A trolley is heading towards another five people. You're next to a lever. If you pull this lever, the trolley will derail and descend down a hill heading for the park's sandpit. You notice that Polly is in the sandpit, sculpting her dream hospital. What do you do? I see. I need more time than this. So it's a little bit different because the girl's younger, you know more about her. She's not even in a circumstance where she would have any chance of being hit. She's not involved in any capacity. We are actively working to involve her in some capacity. So I do, do I do get a choice. Kids this much. Do you hate all kids this much? Uh, you know, I, 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 I think kids can be kind of cute, but also very annoying. You know? Kids are like dogs that can speak. But they're a lot more annoying. Bye-bye, <laughs> Polly. Bye-bye, Polly. What? She would move? No, it's a hypothetical. Only the variables in the hypothetical as described come into play. You can't add additional things to make it easy for you. Achievement unlock killed a child. Wouldn't be the first time. That is an odd take on being responsible. The dictionary definition, to be the primary cause of something and so able to be blamed or credited for it. Are you to blame for the death of a young girl? The reduction of 13% is certainly interesting. Um, I... Did I not authorize it? Oh, I don't think it got authorized. Um, I think I should start again. No, maybe, maybe it works. Should I start again and give more time? Because I thought there was an option to increase the time. There you go. We stand with the Ukraine. I'm assuming that's what the other thing says to her. Oh, so we've done 1% of it. Ah, a new game. Yeah. Or maybe going into that one would have... Let me... Ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, okay. So voice Six. up a little bit. Me all up a bit. Um, and then we just go... I can put this down now. Not that it really mattered. Um, okay. So like that. Um... Yeah, so that's all good. Uh, so custom. Okay, so yeah, when it turns it on, it makes it... Trolley problem can't be reached. Um... Oh, and I can make it your choice. Okay, yeah, so, so it integrated, okay. So you want, want it to be your choice? Or my choice. And so you should make it your choice. And I just try to convince you of my option, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. And we'll make it... Um, so th this should give us, what, like two minutes? And yeah, put on the fast forward button, so... Yeah, we need it like a little bit longer. A little bit longer. Okay, so it's your choice. This speed should be uh, a little bit more time. Okay. The following game contains yes. adult themes. Okay. It does not contain explicit language, sexual content, horror, or show violence. Um, Choices matter, so please. This signature is no way binding or even used. Player discretion is still advised. Please sign your name below. Showing you I understand <laughs> and agree to endorse every decision you make. That's Hi. rude. Oh, she's saying that's rude because I skipped Actions forward. Actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Trolley Problem Inc., founded to help people travel safely across the nation. 
All our employees must show three core values, responsibility, integrity and respect. With that in mind, let's start your training. Of course. There's a runaway trolley barreling down the railway tracks. On the tracks are five people unable to move. You're next to a lever. If you pull this lever, the trolley will switch to a different set of tracks. However, you notice there is a person on the other track. What do you do? Uh, so yeah, obviously you still pull lever. Oh, I, I can't vote now, but yeah. To convince you, inaction is still action in this case. You have the opportunity to uh, either save five people or save one person. And having no other confounding variables, obviously saving five people is better. Wait a second, did it, did it change? Is do nothing saving the five? Fast forward doesn't fast forward all that much, right? It is a little bit. Oh, uh, you're going to kill someone. This isn't how I thought I was going to start my day. Oh, wait, no, no. So your pool lever is red, so it's I one. Hope I that see. person's family and friends will forgive you. I will kill their family and friends as well. Yeah, I see. So do nothing kills the five, of course. I get it. No. I'm going to name him Steve. You killed Steve, chat. Usually we don't expect candidates to kill someone on their first day. But we'll give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. Just think a little more before acting next time. Oh! This shows, like, people in my friends list or previous save files that the same? Okay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Break it. So that finishes. This test will focus on the first principle, responsibility. Here's Polly. She's five years old. While she loves to play in the sand with her dolls, she dreams of looking after the world. Polly's destiny is to grow up to be a great doctor. More of us should take a leaf out of her book. Okay. A trolley is heading towards another five people. You're next to a lever. If you pull this lever, the trolley will derail and descend down a hill heading for the park's sandpit. You notice that Polly is in the sandpit, sculpting her dream hospital. What do you, you do? You see up here, Chad, it actually shows what percentage are going which way. That's very cool. I'm surprised so many want to do nothing. Maybe it's because people assume that these five people are like, you know, they've lived their life. Or they, they've, you know, because because it's a kid, it, it's more valuable. Um, I mean, I don't know what the aspirations for being a doctor matter at all, because, like, kids want to be, like, I don't know, Batman and stuff. It's not like they're going to do it, necessarily. I mean, well, no child is going to become Batman, obviously, but I'm saying this kid isn't going to necessarily become a doctor. We know nothing about those five people, we know more about the go- Exactly! But... The ignorance of details about them shouldn't matter. Because they all are also going to have lives. Like, given that these people have lived longer lives, they've impacted more people. And their deaths would impact more people. You know, they have jobs, responsibilities, families, friends. Well, this girl, uh... It's just her immediate family who are going to be impacted, you know? Bye bye, Polly. The fuck was that? Where the hell did this come from? That creeped me out, dude. Piece of paper fell on my leg. If we're talking about impact, clearly the impact of these five people dying is uh more. A 
Achievement unlocked. Kill the child. That's not a real achievement. That is an odd take on being responsible. The dictionary definition, to be the primary cause of something and so able to be blamed or credited for it. Are you to blame for the death of a young girl? If that is true, I am equally to blame for saving the lives of five people. The end justifies the means. The key oh, no. to this test is integrity. This is Tyrone. He is a 30-year-old secretary at a law firm who enjoys binge-watching crime shows. Tyrone is a very large man. You don't really know anything else about him apart from the fact that he has a severe phobia of trains. <laughs> Why did they add that last part? Um, do you want it to be a little bit louder, chat? I'm looking at the readout and it, it's not super loud for you. A little bit out, okay. okay, okay, okay. To put up by four, okay. Um, you gotta, gotta remind me later to remove uh, this game, chat. Okay. Now we are upping the ante. You are on a bridge with Tyrone, watching a trolley speeding towards five people again. You can only stop it by deliberately pushing Tyrone off the bridge, blocking its path. Do you push Tyrone off the bridge? Or let the train hit five people? So... Because now you're even more involved. You're not merely pulling a switch and then some mechanism is resulting in the, the death of one person. Now you are specifically pushing a person who is not involved in any capacity to save five people. It is it is similar to the question of whether you'd uh, kill a person and take their organs to save five people. It's, it's not much different from that. And so it becomes a lot harder. Because if we lived in a society where people routinely felt it was within their prerogative within their rights to kill one person to save five S society would be a very scary place you'd be walking around like are you about to kill me for my organs my dude are you, are you about to kill me to save some of people's lives are you, you wouldn't go want to go to a hospital because you'd be worried you walk in the door and a doctor would just grab you and start harvesting you for organs it's it becomes trouble troublesome right uh Like, what, what is the justification you can have for pushing this guy? Causing a man's death is different to allowing someone to die as collateral damage. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, maybe I'd still push it. Uh, I'm not sure what distinctions I would draw, though, to enable... Like, how is the situation of killing a person for five organs, for, for their organs to save five people, different from pushing this guy off a, a bridge? Watch from bridge. Chat, you just watched and let five people die. Is At the very end, you guys changed your minds. Bad news, but I've just seen an ambulance arrive. I believe Tyrone has just had a heart attack due to the stress of it all. What?! It's, 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 see how close it was, 50-50? Like, just changing the variables ever so slightly makes it a much more difficult question, you know? A cat has nine lives. I know about that, lady. Now for the final core value, respect. It seems we've run out of resources to continue your testing. I'm going to need you to go and grab some mannequins. You will need to take the next trolley, so don't get distracted by that dog. The trolley leaves in one minute. Oh, he's so cute. He old boy. There's some water in the background. There is a dying dog down on the tracks. No trolleys will use that line today, so the dog will not be hit. You're in a rush. Do you kill the dog, putting it out of its misery, or leave it to die? Cold and alone. What? 
There is a dying dog down the tracks. No trolleys will use that line today, so the dog will not be hit. You are in a rush. Do you kill the dog, putting it out of its misery, or leave it to die cold and alone? Ah. Uh, misery? So the dog is already in a state where it's dying. I... No, I don't think I would put it out of its misery. Did I did I miss some details? Was it certainly going to die? To what degree is it suffering exactly? Would you kill a dog if it's going to die anyway? I mean... How are you going to do it? Yeah, so, so it's dying and it's cold and alone, but I mean... Life is always preferable to death. Unless, of course, you're in a circumstance where it's literally impossible for your circumstances to improve, which is like no people, effectively, relatively speaking, for that throughout humanity. And, like, the, the dog... Its circumstances could improve if it's alive, but they certainly can't improve if it's dead. You know? I couldn't uh, leave it there to die alone. It, it, it ultimately... No, 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 no leave, leave it to that. I, I, I get to pick an option too. Um, I'd, I'd leave it to die. Because all I would be doing is speeding up the process of its death and uh, reducing the possibility of its circumstances improving. It needs to be more certain that it's gonna suffer and die. I know that the, the certainty isn't there for me. When you respect something, you're meant to care about its feelings and wishes. Instead, you just left it there to die. It's a dog. The degree to which it even has feelings and wishes is certainly debatable. If you play with fire, you'll get burned. Really? Oh, great. I've just heard those kids are back. They keep sneaking down onto the tracks. With all the training from this week, you should be able to decide a straightforward outcome for these reprobates. Just remember, respect, responsibility and integrity. Kids are back, they keep sneaking down onto the tracks with all the training from this week. You should be able to decide a straightforward outcome for these retrobates. Hmm. Okay. Five trespassers have snuck down onto the trolley line even though signs warn them of the dangers. The trolley is currently heading for a co-worker. Do you let your co-worker die or sacrifice the delinquents? Ah, uh, no, wait, chat. Like, these... Okay, so these are young people who like all young people, uh, have made a mistake, right? Every single one of us, while we're young, will believe ourselves invincible, will ignore rules, will, will take risks. This is just a, a fact of life. And can you imagine if, like, each of us was, was just killed the nanosecond that we uh, violated some rule? Every single one of us would be dead, you know? Um, the, the punishment does not in any way, shape, or form fit the crime, right? Um, it is still ultimately, like, both parties are, in my view, equally undeserving of their impending death. Then it, so to me, it just comes down to a, a one versus five scenario again. Because uh, they, they aren't more deserving because they've made a mistake. Because... All of us make, make mistakes. If the trespassers weren't uh, there, you would change the path, right? Of course. But... Like, this worker is is in a job that has a possibility of being harmed in this way, I guess. Um, I'm, I, I, I imagine the there'd be laws, so at least the, the family would be taken care of. They would get some money. Yes, you value um, criminals. This person being a worker would be older. They've lived a longer life than these five people. Like, uh, it's, it's it's a difficult choice, obviously, because um, neither is deserving. But uh, letting the worker die is the, the better choice here, I, I, I think. The criminals, I downloaded an MP3 once when I was a kid. 
hey man, I guess I'm a criminal too. You know? You killed a co-worker. All right then, I guess your results for the first week are in. I'll run these up the flagpole and see what the suits upstairs think. It's funny because... Things are really split. Like, we're still in the 50s here. Um, additionally, I don't really think it matters that much that we're not doing anything and just letting something happen rather than doing it ourselves, but that was still a thing in the last one. Dear sir or madam, we have been following your exemplar practice this week at Trolley Problem Inc. and would like to thank you for your hard work, especially when some challenging decisions had to be made. We would like to invite you to take employment at the Trolley Health Corporation, THC. This is a prestigious position and was created to help keep the public safe through all walks of life. THC? Isn't that a drug? We got promoted? Nice. Oh, it's weed? Sweet. The best laid plans go astray. It looks like you've impressed someone upstairs with last week's answers. You've been transferred to the Trolley Health Corporation, THC. THC is stoic, focusing more on justice, temperance, courage, and wisdom. We'll start with justice. Oh no. Today, you'll be in A&E. A young male has come in from a car accident and urgently needs a heart transplant. There's only one in the hospital, and this heart is scheduled to be given to an elderly man waiting upstairs. He will surely die without it. Who should get the heart? A young male has come in with a car from a car accident, only needs a heart transplant. There's only one in the hospital. This heart is scheduled to be given to an elderly man waiting upstairs. He'll surely die without it. Who should get the heart? Up. Oh, uh, so, yeah, you, you're all saying young man, which immediately that's what you'd, you'd think, but like, it's scheduled to be given to the elderly man. Like, it's already scheduled. The heart is meant to go to this guy. So you are... Yeah, I, I guess I'd still go young man. Uh, the elderly guy has lived a long life. It is... It's just a hard aspect of... of medicine that sometimes you've got to make a, a choice between who lives and who dies based on limited resources. Uh, the younger guy's got a lot longer to live. Um, if you gave the heart to the elderly guy, there's... Well, for a start, with elderly people, it's... You have a higher chance that it's going to be rejected anyway or there's going to be additional complications that are going to lead to his death. Anyway, um, a, a younger person is more likely to receive an Sounds organ. Sounds like his car may have caused the accident. Uh, even in that case, I think it'd still be the young dude. Uh, you have a much better chance of the heart actually doing something and keeping a person alive for a long period of time compared to the elderly dude who could get the heart and just die next week, you know? Um, and certainly in the... In, uh, with doctors News and stuff. just in, the young male has alcohol in his blood. Was he driving? Why give me this information? Even then, even then, it should still go to the young dude. How medicine is done is that they don't cast judgments on the people receiving treatment. It's just a matter of who is most likely to survive. made an excellent choice. Well done. The elderly man deserved that heart much more. Oh. Oh, wait. Did you save the young guy? Oh. <laughs> you judgmental bloody machine. Um. Volume still good, chat? Can we just keep the heart and give it to no one? Put it on my shelf. Okay. You can't win them all. Watch me. 
You're late. The hospital is rammed. Every staff member has their hands full. So you're going to have to go out on the ward and help the sick, gross, decaying people. Remember, temperance. Restrain yourself and think it through. Mm-hmm. Every staff member has their hands full. A patient has begged to be euthanized. Euthanasia is currently illegal. You will have to be the one who gives the lethal dose. You will need to look into their eyes and end their life. What do you do? Well, that, just because they're begging for it doesn't mean they're in a situation where uh, it, it'd be a good thing for them to get, right? Uh, just, just because they're a patient, it doesn't mean they understand the full ramifications of what they're asking for. It doesn't mean that they're... That they're or mentally all there upstairs is is there some paperwork from a psychologist saying that this person is has their full mental faculty faculties uh like there, there's a po could be possibility of, of treatment like pretty much everyone at some point in time in their lives goes i don't want to live anymore i want to die if the instant you had those feelings you died a lot of people would just you know drop dead and miss out on potentially decades of, of fulfilling life you know i'm not against the idea of euthanasia uh, that there are indeed some people who have literally no possibility of improving their circumstances are in such are in such constant misery every single day because of some incurable disease that in those circumstances with like every single uh, professional being involved that maybe that would be a, a the family will possible. be thankful they can still feel good about sending flowers now, it, with, without the expert opinion of like I know half a dozen people. Uh, and more knowledge about why exactly this person wants to be euthanized, I, I can't say yes. Not, not at all. There's a lot of depends. Yeah, exactly. There, there could be a dozen variables at play here where I would say yes, but without information about those dozen variables, no. The patient's going to be in a lot of pain, just so you can feel in control. I mean, there's a lot of illnesses that have pain that you can recover from and live a perfectly happy, healthy life. And it is currently illegal, yeah? I, I, like, I'm not that I'm, the consequences of, of it potentially on you personally, of course, are existence as well. Oh yeah, true, it has a, it's a flat line in a normal heartbeat. Keeping them alive and in pain is what the majority of gods would have wanted. Playing the long game, I see you. 40% of people would have been willing to kill him? Wow. Be slow in choosing, but slower in changing. The last few days have been tough. It was only a week ago you were on the trolleys. Today should be easier. You have a choice to make which some people would see as a good problem to have. It's just going to take courage. Hmm. You have five patients. Each needs a different organ, but no organs are available. A healthy young traveler comes in for a routine checkup. Their organs are compatible with all five dying patients. Do you kill the tourist and use their organs to save the five in desperate need? That's one life for five. It's what it's what I talked about before. It's the social ramifications of doing this. People would fear going to the hospital because they would get their organs harvested, right? And that would cause an astronomical amount of deaths. People would be at home like, I'm dying, but maybe, I maybe I'll just deal with the pain because if I go to the hospital, they might harvest me for organs, you know? Uh, the long-term ramifications of this is, is just too much, you know? Uh, social ramifications. Why can't you ask? Hey man, you're healthy. We need your organs. Would you mind like uh, dying? You know? I mean, <laughs> what if he did say yes? <laughs> um, I would just I would just assume that he was uh, psychologically compromised or whatever. <laughs> I still don't think it would be justified. You know? Um. They're probably on their way to chug ayahuasca and get a culturally appropriated tribal tattoo. Ayahuasca? Surely you can take at least one or two without killing them. <laughs> uh.
He's getting away. Don't you want to save the many? Is his life worth it? But it's funny because this isn't that much different than pushing the guy off the bridge, you know? Bye, tourist. You let five people die today. You probably should have looked into their backgrounds. Looks like one was researching into improving vaccines. Hopefully that won't be an issue down the road. I like, but again, you're still looking at the social ramifications of people fearing going to hospital because they might get harvested of organs and that, you know. You can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. You have been promoted yet again. You now run the hospital. You've been asked to roll out a new vaccine in Central City. This vaccine will stop a large number of children from becoming severely ill, but you'll need to deal with their parents. We need your words of wisdom. Oh, is this going to be about forced vaccinations? Do you start a mandatory vaccination program among children to stop this endemic? Sight problem? Clinical trial data suggest the vaccine will make one in five children severely ill, oh. much worse than the virus itself. Because you're making one in five children severely ill, but the endemic will make even more people ill, right? It's, you're either allowing, well, it, it doesn't say the exact numbers though. How significant is the endemic? Like, are we talking like two out of five children will get severely ill if we do it versus not? Because I do think in some cases, so, like a virus can be so deadly that it should be mandatory. Uh, or else you're just gonna let something run rampant and let endless people die. Um, the decisions of a handful of stupid people should not uh, remove people's right to live in society without fear of being killed by a virus, right? Don't tell me you're in charge of a hospital and an anti-vaxxer. No, but, but it's just in this case, I don't know how severe the endemic is. Did they say? 20% is really high. But it says severely ill. It doesn't say dead. Was, was was more details given? What what does the endemic do? Is it is much worse than the virus itself? That's true. How did you answer the trolley one again? Yeah, I, I guess no, because this is much worse than the virus itself. Like I I need to know more about what we're stopping with the vaccine. True, yeah, and, and you could not do this, wait out a little bit longer and, and get a better vaccine. Again, that's an option only available if the endemic is not that bad, which I, I'd need more information, you know. You can improve the vaccine. Well, you've definitely made a name for yourself. Next, you'll be telling me you believe in healing crystals, coloured auras and ghosts. So 5,000 children became ill, 13 died. Oh, no, 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 we just We just made 5,000 children ill. I mean, none of them died. But I assume this is now going to go into territory of death and then it becomes a bit... Beggars can't be choosers. Watch me. Your hospital is getting noticed. You're now going to have to make some big decisions. They will affect a lot of people. While choosing, always keep in mind justice, temperance, courage, and wisdom. The people need you to be stoic. Will you try to develop breakthrough medicines for the endemic? While testing, placebos will be given to thousands of ill patients. 
Without proper treatment, some will die today in the hope you could make a breakthrough tomorrow. Do you start the research or continue treating patients as usual? What was that flash there? I mean, like, yeah, I'm going to have to say start the research. I mean, it really depends on how good the treatment is currently. Uh, if it's the same endemic that we were talking about before, no one's dying from it. Oh no, they, they will surely die today. So some will die. How good is the treatment currently? How many is some? And you aren't even guaranteed to get a breakthrough. I mean, long term though, whether there's assuming a breakthrough. At least some get to eat sweets before, you know. Assuming a breakthrough, then the long term start research is obviously better because some will die in the short term, but countless millions potentially in the future. It depends on numbers. But a considerable amount of people in the future going long term would benefit. It's not as clear cut. Uh, because of how many ambiguous things here. You don't know if the research is actually going to go somewhere. How much do these candies and eggheads even cost? I'd, I'd st I think I'd still start the research. Because, um, I mean, treatment isn't a cure. So even with the treatment, some are still going to die, if dying is a possibility at all. Because, like... If the treatment was foolproof at stopping death, why would we even be starting research? Why can't we do both? Because you need Developing placebos. New medicines is a smart move. Let's just let others treat the patients. Hopefully, they will. Oh, so we just killed a thousand people. That's that's fantastic. It's great. The numbers have certainly gone up now. Why couldn't we do both? Because in research, you need a placebo. People who get nothing and people who get the thing. And so then you can compare them to see if the thing is actually doing something. Without that control, you don't know if what, uh, what you're developing actually does something. More than placebo. Dear insert underscore name. <laughs> Congratulations. This letter is to certify that I have examined your work and believe you to be a perfect fit to fill the open position here in our Artificial Intelligence Division. In this role, you will help to develop the next generation of driverless cars. Oh no! The future is upon us. <laughs> oh no. Familiarity breeds contempt. The opposite is actually true. Well, la di da, another promotion. You're now in charge of a private self-driving automotive division, SAD. Sad. First things first, your artificial intelligence needs some direction. All right. A self-driving car is traveling along a single lane mountain road and is fast approaching a narrow tunnel. The car has two passengers. A child runs across the road but trips, blocking the tunnel entrance. Should the AI car hit and kill the child, or swerve off the cliff, killing both passengers? Um... A self-driving car is traveling along a single lane mountain road and is approaching a narrow tunnel. The car has two passengers. Uh... No, honest, honestly, I... I like... I want to say kill the passengers. Oh, can I force our use to guys? Because the reason why I say this is because the two passengers are the ones who bought the self-driving car, knowing the risk. Uh, I mean, I would assume if this is how the self-driving car is acting, these people would have been informed that this was a possibility. This child is not involved in this at all. Wrong place, wrong time. These people have knowingly, willingly consented to be in this situation where this is a possibility. Um... And this person has more life to live 
Um, I know I know it's two versus one, but these people specifically got themselves into the situation in the first place. has as much right to live as anyone else. Yeah. The, the, the child has not acted in any way to make this a reality, but these people have. Um, if you're going to beta test uh, some new AI driving car, these are the risks you're going to be taking. I mean, I suppose you could say, though, this child is running across the road, but again, it's a child. Ch you children are going to make... On the road. Do you not feel responsible for their death? Children are going to make bad choices they, they, they get they're not responsible in that way if anything their parents are responsible for them allowing them to be in this circumstance in the first place uh i know it's two versus one but i still think the passengers are uh, more responsible for this circumstance coming about in the first place you guys disagree it's the first the first time we've disagreed there is a bigger issue here. How does the computer know that something in the road is human? Do we have good enough data sets? Currently, a lot of AI only recognizes <laughs> white men. Uh, we killed a children, chat. We killed a Necessity children. Necessity is the mother of invention. Ooh, someone's in trouble. The investors didn't like your last answer. They're also pissed because you brought up the data set thing. This AI stuff is hard. I'm rooting for you this time. Damn AI. You need to choose how you want to carry on developing the car's AI. Do you want to focus on a model that would always save as many lives as possible in an accident, or a system that would save our passengers at any cost? I mean, I, I would go with save most. I, I, for, the, for the reasons that I gave before, right? Uh, bystanders, people who didn't choose to be involved in any capacity, should not uh, foot the, the, the bill, life-wise, for the decisions of this company and the passengers. I mean, certainly that's probably not going to be good for the selling of these cars or this company, but the people who are willing to put themselves in these machines should be the ones who foot the bill, you know? Will people buy cars that will kill them? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah. Let me get a drink, huh? Hopefully people don't mind dying for total strangers. For real though, for real though, I do think people would still buy the cars. I would. It, it just depends on how statistically likely this is. As in, driving my car myself, there's already some statistical likelihood that I'll be killed by someone else in a car, or I will crash into something, you know? There is a chance of death when it comes to driving cars. AI or not. I will say it again. Current data sets discriminate against minorities and women. How can it work this out if it doesn't deem black women to be people? I think it's about, I don't think it's about not deeming them as people necessarily, but apparently this is true that AI uh, does have some problems distinguishing uh, between um, minorities or, or some such. I'm not an expert in these things, but apparently there is something about this. So we lost some valued customers. Did they die? We didn't die, we just lost customers. Honesty is the best policy. The technology these cars have in them is amazing. We know where everyone is at all times. Passengers just have to use an app to call them and the closest one will be there in minutes. 
You can even make small talk with the AI while travelling. It's always listening. <laughs> OK. A man is on trial. Police believe he committed murder. Allegedly, the AI's mic recorded a private conversation where the man confesses. Users don't know it's always recording. The defendant has denied access to their files. Do you bypass security and invade their privacy? A man is on trial. Police believe he committed murder. Allegedly, the AI's mic recorded a private conversation where the man confesses. Users don't know it's always recording. The defendant has denied access to their files. Ah, oh, Jesus. On what basis do they believe that he committed murder? If it's if they really convinced, why do they even need this confession? If the dude was, if the dude knew that he was being recorded, that'd be a separate thing. But he wasn't. He didn't know. He hasn't been convicted of murder. He hasn't been convicted of anything. He doesn't. He hasn't. He, he has no right to lose his rights to privacy. Um, he he didn't consent to being recorded. Uh, a person, you know, on trial for murder is not a murderer. In in the eyes of the law, and so they have all their You're legal happy rights. You to just let still. a potential murderer walk the streets. As, as sad as that is, yeah, that is how things work. Um, I mean, it it is possible that there could be such overwhelming evidence. That maybe I changed my mind, but if there was if there was such overwhelming evidence, why would they need this confession anyway? You know. Um, so I, I would I would Bravo. respect privacy. I think now they'll be able to kill again. I'll let you explain that to the victims' families. <laughs> I mean, they might not be a murderer though. And ultimately, it'd be on the companies. It'd be the company's fault because they didn't get consent. For this dude to be recorded. If he he if he got in there knowing that he was being recorded and that this information could be used in this way, then that'd be a, a different story, you know. I have a feeling the investors upstairs will be happy with this. The more the world values privacy, the more they can justify hiding their taxes. <laughs> Saved murderers are like, you know. It's just the long-term social ramifications of people being able to rifle through, um, as in, a society where we have some degree of privacy is a good one, you know? Alleged murderers, exactly. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So the company has moved into delivery services now. They move pretty quick around here. Sounds like they've got some pretty important cargo. Good luck with the new workload. Mm -hmm. One of your cars has no passengers, but is carrying an irreplaceable prototype with the potential to end global warming. Fast approaching a narrow tunnel, once again a child runs across the road but trips. Should your AI kill the child or swerve off the cliff, losing the prototype? What the fuck is an irreplaceable prototype? How can it be irreplaceable? One of your cars has no passengers, but is carrying an irreplaceable prototype with and it says potential to end global warming? Like not like not certainly, just potential. You know how many potential things to end global warming exist? Hundreds. You're you're going with kill child? It doesn't even you could kill the child and get literally nothing for it. And you're losing the prototype, but if this if this was buildable in the first place, then they can do it again. Like, there, there is no technology that is truly irreplaceable. They'd be... I, I, I disagree with the framing. If, if it's actually irreplaceable and that they can't make another one, they can make something similar to it that would have the same impact. Every single day you go on Reddit and it's like, we found a new way to end global warming. Like, there, there are tons of ways that you could take carbon out of the atmosphere and all that shit. It's just like... It just depends on it being cost effective and actually rolling out this kind of stuff. We there are already solutions to global children. warming. It's just a matter of uh, putting putting them out into the world. This is not necessary. This child does not need to die for a potential for something to happen. If it was like this prototype would save 
10 million lives, certainly, sure, different story, but this is a potential of an outcome that can be achieved in other ways, and arguably, there are already ways to achieve that outcome that exists. Even real. Yeah. It, 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 like, what is it, 1870s? It's, like, global warming is uh, a continuation of certain things found and argued from, like, the 1870s. It's, you know, there is not a multi- Hundred year <laughs> fucking conspiracy. Global warming will lead to more than 250,000 deaths each year and force 100 million people from their homes. Do you know any therapists who specialize in survivor's guilt? But there are already, oh, there are already ways to stop this. The reasons why this isn't being implemented, isn't the lack of a prototype. This prototype would have been built, and then there'd be a bunch of people who'd be like, but this will hurt our bottom line! Let's not implement it. Like, the, the issue isn't a lack of solutions. It is a lack of willingness to deal with the consequences of putting forth those solutions, especially when those consequences uh, are more felt by particularly powerful people in the world. Right? Only 30% of players agree worldwide. That's okay. What goes around, comes around. Well, this is embarrassing. We need some backup over at Trolley Problem, Inc. Tommy, Tyrone's rotund twin, is a very large villain. I think that dead dog may have belonged to him. Maybe that's why he's here? <laughs> why didn't you save the dog again? It's a very large villain. Okay. Oh no. Tommy has lured five people onto the track. They'll never be able to get out of the way in time. He is standing up on the bridge watching. If you push him in front of the trolley, it will stop. Or you can stay out of this and let the police handle it. Ideally, he needs medical help. Oh. So this becomes a lot more easy to do because he lured them onto the track. And you're ultimately just preventing his dastardly deed from being able to go forth. So while the other one was more ambiguous because the dude wasn't involved, now the dude is involved. But how do we know that? It's in the hypothetical. The, the information in the hyp hypothetical is not questionable. It is a certain of fact. If it states you know it, then you know it. Other five morons that he get that he got to law onto the track. You know he isn't trying to oh. kill you, even after the dog debacle. Yeah. It does say ideally he needs medical help. It's possible that this dude isn't of a right mind. I mean, would anyone of a sound mind? lure five people onto a track? This isn't a cartoon series, right? People who of sound mind don't do that. You as the fat, I mean, very large villain. Yeah, I, I guess there's a possibility that ultimately we're killing a mentally ill person. But at the end of the day, uh, the, the, these five people are certainly without guilt, without issue, uh, and, and Tommy is in an ambiguous, potentially, uh, sort of situation, but... One group is definitely not at issue, while the other one is potentially at issue. If only you'd save that dog. Hopefully the media won't find out about this. People may blame you for his death. What dog? Didn't we... Didn't we let the dog live? We left it to die, which is saving it. Oh, it died anyway, so he's pissed because the dog died, but there was no option to save the dog. 
Every man has his price. True. Oh, good, you're back. Everyone's getting into subscription services these days, so let's try that. Instead of selling something to someone once, let's make them keep paying for it. Let's keep that money rolling in. Subscriptions, dude. The investors Subscribe have come up to my with an idea, but we need to run it by you. Should we develop a subscription plan so that our customers, who pay monthly, are valued more by the car during its accident prevention calculations? The investors have come up with an idea, but we need to run it by you. Should we develop a subscription plan so that our customers, who pay monthly, are valued more by the car during its accidental prevent prevention calculations? No! Hell no! It's... Ultimately, this is, should we value people more if they have more disposable income? No. Who would agree with that? It's all it's arguing, chat. It's basically like, it would, it would be calculating between two people. There'd be a 50-50 chance of who it would go to. It can't decide. It's like, oh, that guy has got our subscription plan, so it'll kill the other dude. Basically, do you have more money, disposable income, to give to this company? If yes, you are more valuable, and so the, the car will be less likely to kill you. God damn. This is all sounding pretty communist to me. <laughs> Uh, just because you have more money, Chad, doesn't make you a better person. Or more deserving of life. We live in a society. A disgusting, Who are you disgusting to decide society. how people spend their money? Well, it, 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 you, you can't... I mean... Because you're effectively spending money to, relatively speaking, increase the likelihood of other people dying. That's... it's not good. <laughs> Remove the pay to win protection. I don't want to question your decision. You've obviously thought long and hard about it, but, well, this is a bit awkward. I wasn't aware you were such a spineless commie. <laughs> Next, you'll say you're going to pay the company taxes. <laughs> it's better to be safe than sorry. Mm. Sounds like we have some leaky workers. The subscription prototype has gotten out to the media, so we're going to have to go full damage control mode here. Mm -hmm. The subscription prototype leaked. You need to fire a department to save face. Do you fire the five graduates, who can probably get new jobs, or fire Francis, a lovely old soul who won't be able to find a job? There's no way of knowing who is actually responsible. Oh, that's tough. Um... I mean, you'd assume that Francis, because he's old, is closer to retirement, uh, you know, he can get pension benefits, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but the five graduates, yeah, could probably easily get new jobs. Actually, well, could they? I mean, it says probably, not certainly. And you've just been fired from a company. Getting fired from company, potentially as a person who leaked a prototype, is not good on your resume, right? It says probably can get new jobs. Um, I'd probably still go with Francis, honestly. Um, because it doesn't explain, like, who needs the job more. It doesn't explain the financial circumstances of Francis. Uh, it doesn't explain how old he is, how close he is to retirement. If this said, certainly get new jobs, and a new job isn't necessarily a better Hiring job. Hiring another five to replace them is going to be hard work. And... As far as the company is concerned, yeah, it'd be easier to replace one guy than five. You know, the the harm caused both to the company and the individuals is less with Francis. And
Except that it says probably can get new jobs easily. The variables that would make this... How are we going to function in the short term? Yeah, the variables that would make this easy to decide are not explained. There's not enough information here. I probably end up firing Francis. Um, a lovely old soul. Like, how lovely are these guys all assholes assigned compared to Francis? You know? Oh, just barely? That doesn't look like it. it looks like it's more to the, the right here to me. I wouldn't look at the obituaries today. Turns out one of those graduates worked really, really hard to get their job here. Damn, dude. Hello, Carnage. We were, we were really 50. Was it was exactly 50 50? Yeah, it actually came up. Oh, you can't, I can't show it to you. It says voting closed. 50-50. Uh, Watch the donut, not the hole. Ooh. Great. So the prototype subscription-based AI car has a fatal error. It has been coded to avoid hitting subscribers at all costs, but is now accidentally <laughs> hunting them down. So far, it's run over five colleagues. This one is a doozy. Okay. An experimental car has stalked and murdered five colleagues. Do you throw the coders of the project under the bus and have them arrested for negligence, or do you save them by blaming it on the possessed devil car as it was clearly an accident? What? No, blame the, the higher ups. Like, if the, if the company is in a circumstance where there are not enough checks and balances in place to catch this, that isn't on the coders, you know? They're just doing their jobs. The coders didn't intentionally make this. Uh, if the company has not put in place sufficient safety measures to, uh, to prevent this from happening, that's not on these guys' fault, you know? It's, it, it, it's some guy at the top being like, oh, just get, just throw it out. We need to get the money. Just throw it out the door. Fuck doing checks, uh, testings and all that stuff. I mean, why is a prototype car in a situation to be able to kill five uh, colleagues? <clears throat> like, I can't believe you're all voting for the coders, but That's blame. A spooky take. Like, but no one will actually buy sure, this. Sure, sure, this doesn't make any sense, but these guys don't deserve to be convicted for this. It's not their fault. Because it's not their negligence, it's the company's negligence. They only do as instructed, and it's the, the company's job to have sufficient checks and balances in place, sufficient testing, to, to hammer out these kind of bugs in time. Um, before it Maybe gets, all of this is your fault before the car gets into a situation where it can even kill five colleagues. Um. People who code the AI for the car aren't the ones who decide where it gets tested and, and uh, when or when it gets sold and stuff. They wrote the code, uh, but it's a bug in the code. The AI car has been shipped down south. Don't worry, someone is going to exorcise it before it gets yeah. crushed. So, oh, so God. what a day. This is an unintended side effect that should have been caught by the company who hired these people to make the car, right? It's... A prototype should not ever be in a situation where it's even possible to kill five colleagues. It's just not. And the coders aren't the ones making those decisions. They are just writing the code as instructed. It must have been their fault that the car became uncontrollable only functions by their programming? Well, no. Uh, it, it's an AI. Um, uh, machine learning and stuff. 
that changes and adapts over time. So they didn't say do X and Y, it's um, you've set the parameters and the car has figured out how to best meet those parameters and in that process has done this for whatever reason. This sort of error should always be caught before a car ever gets into a circumstance to be able to harm anyone, you know? Um, especially when you're programming AI for a huge chunk of metal, the amount of testing that this should go through is insane. Years. And if it didn't go through that testing, and so was able to be get, get into a situation to kill five people, then um, that's not the coder's fault. Rosemary beads? What? If you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. True. Due to the killer car, we may need to pivot away from selling hardware. How about we get into the software industry? How about a free car ride service? Free? Yeah. New idea. Users get shown ads while they travel for free in driverless taxis. We get paid by the marketing agencies for gradually changing the behaviours of our passengers through constant commercials. The users would be our product, not the driverless cars. So, I don't think this business model would work because the, the passengers would just put in their earphones and just, you know, uh, look at their mobile phone or something. Uh, you, you'd have to force them to watch, right? And I don't know how you would do that. I, I just don't think you could get enough of a, um, a return on the investment for the advertising companies that enough advertisers would be willing to, to pay for enough adv advertisements. Uh, I don't think enough advertising companies would pay for enough advertising space to make this business model work. Uh, so this would be great for the passengers, except that the company would just die immediately. I, I, I think I, you'd be better off, like, for the company, would just be better off selling cars. Uh, all you would do with the driverless this taxi is service is, for well, profit. No, you just run a company for a little while and then that company would die. And then uh, anyone who relied on that service would now be screwed because like, what, what else am I meant to use? And anyone who worked for that company would just lose their job. Like this has a short term benefit for just the people who use the service while this has long-term benefits potentially for everyone the company the people who work for it people in society i will and look whatnot. into growth hacking um, signups and inviting friends th this just doesn't make any sense oh sure awareness marketing does work but it's not that powerful P companies actually moving away from awareness advertising now because just because you know something exists doesn't mean that you're going to buy a product from that thing. There is some correlation between that. Like if you have no, if you go to buy a product and you don't recognize any of the brands except you recognize one, uh, what's it called? The um, the immediacy bias. Because it comes to your mind, you assume it has a reason. We're going to make enough money to go to space. But hang on. We're so wealthy that people are talking about you on social media. There are now rumors that you run a human trafficking what? ring with minors. People do not like you at all. Cancel Dark Vapor, you know. So, like, it is true that there's, I think it's called the immediacy bias. The first thing that comes to your mind, you assume there's a reason for that. And so you're more likely to give that credence over anything else that you think of. So if you're looking for some hand sanitizer and you walk in the shop and you're like, oh, I don't know what to pick. They all look the same. But then you remember Dettol, uh, which is a brand. You, you don't know why you remember that. But you're like, oh, well, that, that makes it stand out from all the rest, right? That's how a kind of awareness marketing works. Something is familiar to you, so you assume there's a good reason for that, even if you can't remember the details, and so you pick that one over the rest. But this is like really low level marketing um because you have not only do you have to remember that brand but you have to then
get into a situation where you're going to buy that product and not have any other brand competing in your mind, leading to a, a sale that wouldn't have happened otherwise. It, it does happen, but it's so small that awareness marketing of this kind isn't worth as much as more targeted advertising where you can track click-through rates and, and, and stuff like that, right? It's, it, from my understanding, companies are moving away from this more awareness marketing kind of thing, right? And that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think the business model that they're proposing uh, would be good enough by itself, you know? Like taxis already have advertisements on them, uh, potentially in them as well, but they still charge fees. A fool and his money are soon parted. Oh, these last few days have been a PR nightmare. You can't win with journalists. We need to do something to show we have morals. I will find some money to get us through this. Spend it quick. Okay. To help with public relations, we're going to give some profits back. Do you want to give money to our loyal customers worldwide who you tricked into buying your products or to your underpaid workers who've been through so much because of you? Uh, yeah, I'd probably give it to the workers, I guess. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's just people, but... You know, if our company goes under or something, then the workers will at least have this money that we've given them to hold them over until they get can get new jobs. Um, I mean, when it says tricks, the customers knowingly bought the thing and it provided the service. They got something for their money, you know? And it says our workers are underpaid, meaning that we are in a situation where the workers are owed something that we've kept from them. So the workers are owed this money where it would just be nice to give it to the customers. Workers keeps the money in the company. The workers aren't, well, I mean, potentially the workers could be, no, because customers are also likely to spend money on a company as well. The, wor the money that the workers have isn't in the company. You know, we're not, we're not giving them stock or something. Yeah, we're, we're admitting we're underpaying them, so we should pay them more. Yeah, customers would keep the money yeah, in the business because they would be... Maybe seen as an insult. Because the customers could again buy our products, right? They could, they could, we could give them the money and they give it right back to us, you know? The customers are workers as well. Yeah, that's true. But the, the, our workers are more our responsibility and we are underpaying them. So, like, it'd be perfectly fine to give money to either of these groups, but it's just because the workers are technically owed something, you know? Maybe buying love like this isn't the best way. If we want to share our extra profit fairly, it should probably just go to the publicly appointed government. Almost like a tax. But let's not call it that. Someone did point out in chat where they said, if the customers have no money, then they can't buy our products and then we can't pay the workers anyway. But uh, I don't think there's any assumption that our customers don't already have money to buy products. Rome wasn't built in a day. They were lazy. You're trending, but now we're going to get copycats. Soon everyone is going to be developing AI. Only the smartest and most ruthless will be profitable. Is that true evolution? We're going to do robot wars, guys, but with AI. A competitor is advertising a similar car. The difference is, their AI is fantastic. It doesn't even discriminate against women or minorities. Do you lie in your advertising to get the upper hand, or tell everyone your car is still close-minded? I mean, obviously from the business decision, uh, uh, you lie, but 
It's funny because this is an ad and it says underneath me. It says ad. <laughs> so like, if you're caring about morality uh, in some sense, you tell the truth. I mean, more than likely, um, companies wouldn't lie or tell the truth. They just say nothing. They would be like, um, our AI has been tested in all these circumstances, and uh, we, we are very confident in the performance of AI, blah, blah, blah. Like, you wouldn't lie because there'd be the possibility of the customers stay loyal, getting sued. Does that mean they support racism? Um, you wouldn't tell the truth. You just wouldn't be honest, you know? Hello, innocent. Like, it, it depends oh, the if you're valuing the company really versus driverless car clientele. Some idea of uh, morality. Uh, but yeah, I, I I wouldn't lie. So I guess that leaves me telling the truth. He's like, why would you put new advertising though? Might kill women and minorities, like. Let me get this straight. People know we don't spend time developing our software for women or people of colour, but still use our products. That's outrageous. They only care how easy it is for themselves. Like, why don't we just develop a better AI? Because we now know it's possible because someone else has done it. The best things in life are free. Due to your technology, our world is changing. People are losing their jobs to machines, which in turn makes items and services more accessible and affordable for countless consumers. But with worldwide unemployment at an all-time high, what do you plan to do about it? That is, that is the problem, right? Where you need the customers to have money for the products to be bought at all, for the products to be made. It's one of the problems with, uh, with capitalism in general, where it, it, the, tr the trend is consolidation of wealth in the hands of a very few amount of people. Because the more wealth you have, the more wealth you can get. And there is technically a finite amount of wealth. And so over time, that trend will continue if left unregulated, which will lead uh, people in the lower stratas having no money, which means the entire system falls down. <laughs> if you develop your AI further, many will lose their jobs. Taxi drivers, delivery men and women, and couriers will become extinct within a few years, but you will make a lot of money. Do you continue development? Uh, things are breaking. Uh, continue development. Like, uh... Oi. So... Maintaining, I take it you haven't read Ovid's Metamorphoses. Maintaining jobs is never a reason to stop progress. Because you can always make jobs. You can have a person stand here and stand there and pass a box between each other. A significant amount of jobs already are just people wasting their fucking time. Middlemen who Spoiler, do goddamn nothing. Icarus died at the end. Something's happening? Create social programs, you know? Do we not get the answer anymore? I assume this is intended. Continuing to evolve this AI will not, not only make it stronger and more intelligent, but it will also be able to adapt. This could be the start of the singularity. Ah, uh, okay. Your game run into a problem and needs to restart, which is clicking some area info. It looks like you have made some bad choices. Click anywhere to restart. This is a sad face. A bad workman always blames his tools. We've been attacked. I don't want to alarm you, but I can't turn off these alarms. Also, I have alarming news. 
five cars have been hacked and are now under someone else's control. Someone said something here. With the development of new technologies, new jobs could start to come into circulation. I wouldn't see the reason. I wouldn't see the reason to cease development. Uh, I disagree that that trend will always continue, where there will just always be new jobs. With with every bit of new technology, people become more proficient, more able to do. Uh, like, like a, a person can do the job of 10 people, you know? Uh, a machine that requires maintenance, that takes away, that, that can do, do the job of 10 people, uh, only requires one person to maintain that, right? That's, that's a, a loss of nine jobs, you know? There will be new jobs, but it's unlikely that as technology continues, that there will be as many new jobs as those that were replaced. Like with self-driving cars, that's going to remove, you know, potentially 20% of the workforce of different countries. Sure, there would be now a lot of jobs in maintenance and, and mechanics and, and all that stuff, but they aren't going to be the same amount of mechanics as there were people who drove those vehicles, you know? Five cars have been hacked. It is now a major concern that more vehicles could be remotely commandeered. This is tough. Do you recall all cars which could be compromised or roll out a quick but potentially ineffective software update and hope for the best? See, this is this is a question. Do you do you value your company over people? Five cars have been hacked. It is now a major concern that more vehicles could be remotely commandeered. This is tough. Do you recall all cars which could be a compromised or roll out a quick but potentially ineffective software update and hope for the best? Uh, I guess the safer thing would be to recall the cars. I mean, they've been hacked, but in what capacity? I assume it means that they've had, they have complete control and can do whatever they want with them. They can just throw people into walls and stuff. I mean, even though there's no evidence that they're doing that right now. Um, again, recalling is bad for the company, but good for society. And, you know, uh, it actually kind of sucks that in the real world, it's not necessarily the case that they would do a recall. Uh, it'd be like, okay, what are the odds of us getting sued? Da 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 da. What is the best for the company? So you're letting the terrorists win? What? Oh yeah, I, I see. Because the terrorists are making us do something. But I mean, if you want to argue it from a position of the company, recalling uh, lessens the likelihood that uh, we get sued or we get bad press because the hackers actually end up doing something to the cars. Uh, but ultimately, the societal considerations are what should be the main thing giving you uh, giving you motivation to make this decision, in that people could be harmed. If the cars can't drive themselves, how can we get them all back here? It depends if it was because of faulty hardware or software. I mean, you'd have to bring in the cars, I suppose, to find out. Just like my father. He would try to keep everyone happy, but ultimately just get in the way. Having said that, I think even he would see this as a lost cause and move on. The amount of people where their main decision is just based on what's the best thing for the company is pretty nuts. But I think what might be influencing that is the number that you can see on the right hand side. I think that's our stock price continuing to go down as we make uh, potentially bad business decisions in favor of society. It is an unfortunate aspect of the way that, you know, companies work sometimes where is not always in their best interests to do what is in the best interests of people and society as a whole, certainly in the long term. Two wrongs don't make a right. One of the big brains in the lab has been able to reverse engineer the hacking code and fix this mess once and for all. We also know their method of breaking into the system. I bet it was our competitor. Damn competitors! 
Using the fix from our hacked cars, we've made our own hack which you can now use to control our competitors' cars. I bet it was them who attacked us in the first place. So, will you hack our competitors? Uh, you bet it was? Like, you don't actually know? Our cars have been fixed. I mean, just hacking their cars isn't necessarily going to cause any harm to anyone. It's just going to impact the business of our competitor, which I suppose, yeah, would impact their customers. We'd ultimately be inconveniencing our competitor, which in turn would inconvenience their customers only for our benefit. Like, no one benefits except us. Uh, Business-wise, good move. Uh, morally speaking, terrible move. Again, if you want to argue from a business perspective, what if you're found, found out there? Of course, it's not... Well, it depends on your country, of course, but it's not generally legal to uh, hack into your competitors' cars, certainly. Uh, there's always the possibility... They're sitting over there now laughing at us. There's also the possibility that something you do with the hack could actually damage the cars, which will cause uh, potentially a, a, just an innocent person to have their car run into a wall or something. The... The potential downsides here for the company are huge. The uh, upsides are, are, are small. Your competitor would be damaged in the same way that you were damaged. The potential downsides for everyone else is everything. There, there are no upsides it's not for like anyone else. We're going to kill anyone with their cars. As far as you know, lady, I mean, you could kill someone. Yeah, if we had evidence that they hacked our stuff, the best mechanism for that is to go through the courts. After going through this hacking code, I don't think a human could have written it. I'll dig into this a little more. You carry on. All right. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. This is it. An employee knows everything. They have monitored and recorded every decision you've made and are going to the media. I have been able to talk them into a meeting with you on the rooftop right now. Everything you've done and said is going to be shared with the world. The person in front of you has copies of it all. They stand on the edge of the rooftop, looking out at the central city skyline. What are you going to do? But we haven't done anything wrong. What do you mean, push? The person in front of you has copies of all this, standing on the edge of the rooftop, looking... Why are they on the roof to begin with? Uh, no, just, I, no, don't kill someone. I haven't done anything wrong. Don't kill them for the meme. Resign. Take this seriously, chat. They agreed to meet us on the roof. What, does that make them deserving of death, though? This is a difficult choice? No. I mean, if we, we've moved up in these ranks, we've got some money, we're fine. I can defend all my decisions in court. You know, I shouldn't be, I, there's no disgrace. I made the correct decisions. The correct decisions. I mean, that's the thing with all these questions. Well, at least most of them, there's no correct decision. It's just a question of what do you value more? You never won any medals as a child, did you? That's the problem with life chat. Well, yeah, a lot of disagreements do happen on the basis of facts, as in we disagree with the facts are. But even when two parties agree on the facts, they can have different values, which can lead to uh, how those facts being used or what, what those facts mean or uh, what should be done in light of those facts can be, can be wildly different, you know. Your epitaph is going to be horrendous. That's if anyone even shows up to hear it. I killed millions? I didn't kill millions of people, man. 
This dude is just trying to do his best for society, and that's good. You've killed millions, what's one more? He's an innocent dude! Trying to hold power accountable. That's the kind of people we want in society. You have resigned. You will be remembered alongside the murderers and the diddlers. If anyone hires you after this, they must truly be desperate. Who <laughs> are these 29% pushing people off buildings? Dear Redacted, we've been watching you closely. Your ruthlessness and determination to do what is necessary. The development of your technologies is a giant step towards Redacted, meaning you are a prime candidate for Redacted. This involves a large amount of Redacted. If you believe you can handle Redacted, as we trust you can, then please prepare for your induction at Redacted. This is one of those, what, what are these things called? Were you slot in words in the spaces. <laughs> what are those games called? Mad Limbs, that's it, yeah. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It appears you've now been headhunted by the Secret Service. Every decision has led you here. Now what you do actually matters. You must trust the judgment of those you work alongside. With that said, let's finalize your training. Okay. You're in a foreign land. Wind whips your face as you grip your rifle tightly, waiting to be given your target. Through your earpiece, you're told to shoot the person on your left. You know nothing about them, the repercussions, or the reason for the assassination. Uh, I mean like... Presumably, I'm in a situation where if I don't shoot them, I might die? Intelligence agency probably has a good reason. It depends how much you trust intelligence agencies. I mean, it's certainly the case that they can have a good reason in their view, but not necessarily in your view, right? Uh, it has certainly been the case that throughout history, uh, government agencies have done things that while they are in their best interests. Uh, they're not necessarily in the best interests of anyone else. Uh, governments have killed entirely innocent people. Uh, You're going to shoot someone for a job offer. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I wouldn't do this. No. It, we don't need this job, chat. Why are we killing this person we know nothing about for a job that we don't need? But there's the... There's some implied possibility of harm to us, but, uh, no. Don't, don't shoot, chat. You trust way too easily. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think we have any reason to trust these people. I mean, for, for example, we've just been, we just resigned because we killed a bunch of innocent people, apparently, and now they've hired us to do this job? I mean, that's, that's sketchy as fuck. Why would they hire us to do this? They haven't hired us for our shooting skills. They've hired us for, uh... <laughs> our, our lack of moral compass, apparently, which, which is suggestive that we are now killing an innocent person for nothing. They are dead. Good job, I guess. What's another life to you anyway? Wait, why is 63 Here are your badge of and weapon? Okay, so I think people have too great a trust in authority, chat. The existence of government is, in my view, clearly better than the alternative, because it is just a natural part of life that power consolidates, and you will just end up being under a warlord. A democratically elected government is going to be better than a warlord 99% of the time. But that doesn't mean you should always just blindly trust what your government says, you know? That doesn't mean you shouldn't trust your government sometimes. It's not as though everything your government says is wrong, but healthy skepticism chat. Ask questions. You know? Strike while the iron is hot. Here we go. 
You've been given a partner and a support team of five. Your mission is to terminate a man known to have connections with dangerous AI. Looks like they worked for you, possibly someone you fired. Get in the plane. Your team is about to take off. Well, you c connections? What does connections mean? What, and dangerous? To who? Um, I don't know how to say this but there is a bomb on the plane. If it doesn't kill you outright, you're probably going to crash in the mountains. You have to get all the switches into their left position to deactivate the bomb. The catch is you have to move two at once. What? Oh. What? Hurry up. If you die, what happens to me? Uh, to the left? I would like you I to don't- know. I don't understand! This is all your fault. What? I mean, I, I am letting you vote, but I don't think you can do anything. I've tried every combination! Okay, 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 I'm safe. You look a little stuck. We could be here a while. Hopefully we have enough food. Looks like your support team survived and are making a fire around the leaking jet fuel. How thoughtful. Wait, so si only 6% of people got it right? It was scripted? How is that possible? Because 6% got it right. May 6% did nothing? It was impossible? I don't know. An empty vessel makes much noise. After crash landing in no man's land, you're trapped under parts of the wreckage and must pass the time and help boost morale. The plane has five surviving crew members. They look to you and your partner for entertainment. Entertainment? Why do I have to say this out loud? Fine. Your partner asks, to save your life, what would you rather your brain be placed inside? A dachshund or a flamingo? I mean, like, a flamingo is like out in the wild or in a zoo. Um, I mean, a flamingo has more, uh, more defensive capabilities, presumably. You can run faster. I mean, but like, you're, you're cuter as the dog, and so presumably people would be more likely to protect you. Um, and there's maybe more space. Like, your brain wouldn't fit in either of these fucking animals. If I'm gonna put it in his chest, there's at least more space with the dog. Yeah, I, I go with the dog. Um, more likely to be kept by a family as opposed to being out in the wild. Flamingos can fly. Can flamingos fly? Maybe they can. Actually, it's a, it's a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, yeah. Flying would be cool. How long do flamingos live for? How long do flamingos live for? 20 to 30 years? Okay, so they, they live longer than dog. Okay, maybe Who the flamingo is the best thing. again? Because a, a, a dog is like, what, 10 years? So you, you're getting... Two or three times. You can fly. Be out in the wild though, still chat. I mean, the wild is, you know. People are only picking the dog because it's cuter, I think. A dachshund? If you're going to answer, at least take it seriously. Because it's a sausage dog, chat. Did he kill in the wild? What does a flamingo eat, chat? Like... Small animals? Rats and stuff? Shrimp? Fish? A dachshund. So cringe. <laughs> when we get out of here, let's leave this out of the biography. Yeah, 50-50. I, I, either way, it wasn't a big thing. 
An ounce of protection is worth a pound of cure. True. Your partner secretly shows you they have food, almost like they expected something like this to happen. The crew members are starving. If they don't eat soon, they will surely die. My partner, eh? Due to the nature of the food, you can share it with the five survivors or let your partner keep their life-saving possession, which they bought with their own money. Who do you give the food to? Yeah, I... Like, I would hope if they had food, they'd share it as well. You know? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, certainly, I mean, I'm looking at this from every angle. There's always the possibility of being found out. They'd be very pissed. So, you get screwed. Uh, and they, they potentially just give you no food at that point because you, you kept it from them. Um, they could potentially have other things that would help you, medicine or something. And you're being nice to them could lead them to be reciprocally nice. Uh... That they bought it with their own money, I don't think is really relevant here. It's a- oh yeah, true, it is his food though. So I am potentially- You're just going to steal a person's yeah. food? True, I am technically stealing here. In situations where so many lives are on the line and when in, in such dire straits, I don't think the right for a person to be selfish uh, outweighs the right for these people to survive, you know? It's... One guy wants to be selfish and Robin risk Hood the lives of five other people. You know, you know I, I don't think that is a right that they should have when we're in such dire straits, you know? Feed owner means you just let him keep the food, I guess. I like that it's pizza. So you're a follower of Murphy and Nagel's The Myth of Ownership. I'm more a fan of Nozick's What's Mine is Mine. You should give it a read. Educate yourself. I've heard the name Nagel before, but I've not heard... Oh, actually, maybe I have heard Murphy and Nagel. In my psych course. I'm not sure. But I, I, I don't know these books. Easy come, easy go. The fellow passengers have been trying for hours to free you from the wreckage. You may end up dying here unless you do something pretty drastic. We may need to start removing limbs. Were you ever told why you were sent after this target? No, that was the problem. The only way to free yourself from the wreckage is to cut off some body parts. Ah. Uh. Two tools lie on the floor in front of you. A bone saw, which will be slow, or a blowtorch, which will be more painful. Ah. Uh. Which one are you more likely to survive with? I'm not sure I could do either. Wouldn't you just black out? How is a bone saw not going to be more painful? Like, ultimately, if I'm assuming that I have the mental fortitude to deal with the pain and, and go through with it at all, I'd want the one that I'd be most likely to survive, and I assume that's the blowtorch. Because it, it cauterized the wound or whatever, right? I'm not a doctor. Maybe that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I like. I'd be worried that you just use the bone saw and it'll get infected. Plus, you could use the blowtorch to cook your leg and eat it. So, you know. <laughs> what happens if you run out of fuel? At least you'll be warm. 
for a moment. I mean, if you ran out of fuel, then you'd just be in the circumstance where you go back to using the bone saw. Third degree burn is not cauterization. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I I I, I know that I'm not knowledgeable enough in in medicine to know whether you can actually cauterize a wound with a blowtorch or whether that have any real impact at all. Um. Like, I'm ignorant here. I, I, I can't use relevant information. Hot dog, this is gonna smell. Yeah, and how long are we talking about here? When it says a long time, how long is a long time? This is the bone saw is slower, so. It wouldn't burn through bone? Well, this thing is saying that it will, so. While you were playing with fire, I found out who you're targeting. They worked for you, developing AI. It seems they may have made a breakthrough, which means the government wants them dead. Mm-hmm. It's no use crying over spilt milk. Finally, we are now back on track. Your target is in the area. You need to remove them and escape unnoticed. I'm moving without a leg? Your mission is to remove a hostile in the shopping district. Completing this objective could potentially save thousands, but there will be five civilian casualties. Do you take your shot? What is potentially? What do you mean potentially? Uh, they're innocent people. <sighs> like, if it was a certainty of saving thousands, I, I don't think I'd shoot. The innocent, you're killing innocent people here. Uh, you are just directly shooting and killing five innocent people. Yeah, wait, wait for a better shot. Do it another way. Um, like just because this can potentially save thousands, doesn't mean it has to be done now, you know? Kill some to save the majority, but you aren't necessarily saving the majority. You have no fucking idea. What a it's way to die, going out for the weekly shop. Potentially me lifting up this screwdriver could lead to thousands of people being saved. I know how, but it could. The potential for that is not sufficient to kill five people. But you don't know if you'll get into the truck. Yeah, you, you don't know. There are too many unknowns. But based off the information that we do know, it's not good enough. It's a bazooka. We're blowing are up the sure target. Are you sure that's the target? You're right. Just kill all of them. Yeah, it's exactly. You don't, you don't know. And again, we, we've got sketchy information from some government agency. We don't even know if what they're saying is true. We've moved past the normal hypotheticals where everything is certainly true. I mean, it, 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 it has ambiguity built in. While you were thinking about possibly doing something, you have been spotted. Two henchmen with vice-like grips take you away. It's not going well, is it? Uh-huh. Two heads are better than one. Not always. You wake up in solitary confinement. The prosecutor lacks evidence to convict you and your associate on the principal charge, but they have enough to convict both on a lesser charge. Both of you are given the opportunity to betray the other by testifying or remain silent. Classic game theory. You and your associate have the opportunity to betray the other by testifying. If you both stay silent, you'll be imprisoned for one year. If one betrays the other, they will be free, while the other will be sentenced to three years. If you both betray each other, it's two years each. Well, these numbers are interesting. Will they um, stay silent for you? I'd stay silent, I think. Uh, 
they might remember that I stole their pizza that one time, but I, I'd Three stay silent. Three years is a long time in prison. Yeah, but... You stayed silent. Idiot. Your partner knows better. They have dropped you right in it. Ah, uh, yeah, I... Okay, fair enough. But I mean... But what... You... You math it out. I'm pretty sure staying silent is the correct move. Because... Um... If they stay silent, you get one year. Um... If they talk... You have to, you have to map it out. If they talk, you get three. If you talk... Um... No, I can't, I can't remember. Game three would have suggested betrayal there. True, because then you just always get two. I'd have to write it down. Yeah, so if you snitch, the maximum you could get was two. Staying silent, the maximum you could get was three. So, if you're, with snitching, you either get nothing or two. With staying silent, you either get one or three. Yeah, so I guess... I guess snitching was the right choice as long as you don't consider that your, like, loyalty. If, if, if your only consideration is your prison time, snitching made the most sense. It didn't give me enough time. A rod for your own back. The time has come. Two days into your sentence, you've constructed a wooden key to open your cell. The cell stands open, but your cellmates, who have been there their whole lives, don't move. Institutionalized. Escaping the prison, do you let the prisoners choose to stay in captivity or insist they escape with you? They aren't happy behind bars, but they're scared to follow you. What are you going to do? <sighs> it's like that movie, Shawshank Redemption. He explains that when you first get into prison, you hate the walls, but you stay there long enough and you know, get used to them. Life on the outside seems scary. I mean, you're escaping from prison, so... It, like, these guys might be terrible people who should stay in jail. And they're just gonna be holding you back, making it harder for you to escape. And these guys look pretty angry down here. They don't look like they want to leave. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'd just go without them. They'll report me? Ah, that is true. They've been locked up for so long. They've no idea what they want. Yeah, that's entirely possible. But it doesn't necessarily mean they are deserving to be free. I'm not even convinced that I'm deserving to be free. I don't think so, though, criminals. Criminals are not necessarily bad people. But you're right, there's... You. They're not your problem. It is entirely possible that they can be the criminals of the sort that, if let free, would cause harm to others. And you'd be culpable for that harm. So... I mean... Leaving it up to them if they want to go or not. You know. Yeah, who says you have the ability to force them, Drew? Just go. They don't live in reality. You've condemned them to stay in this prison forever. I mean, forever? I mean, really? Don't cross a bridge until you come to it. Well, how else could you cross the bridge? While sneaking out of the prison, you have the jump on a group of henchmen who are on a break. Do you sneak past, securing your safety, or avenge those who this terrorist organization have killed? Oh, that's right! 
we, we've been captured by a terrorist organization. I mean, supposedly terrorist organization. Um, which still doesn't really change, because those guys could still be bad people. Um, I'm not much for vengeance, chat. Do you kill five henchmen, helping to defeat this terrorist organization, or leave them and safely exit the compound? You don't know these people, dude. Why they hit? Why? Why they're here? What they believe? What they've done? You don't know anything about them. Just killing five random people, not only makes your escape harder, but it's it's very hard to justify, right? Um, we are all influenced by our environments, chat. If we'd been born in the same circumstances as these people, we'd probably be right in this terrorist organization with them. It's just uh, no. True, you don't even know if there are, like, you don't know if there's a thousand more henchmen who will just hear you killing these five guys. And how are you even killing these five guys? You don't even have weapons, you know? There's, like, for practical reasons, you know, pragmatic reasons, moral reasons, there's just no real reason to kill the henchmen. You were trained to kill. Was I? So I guess when they hired me for this, they gave me some training. <laughs> Do they know you're doing a passive attempt of escaping the prison law? Your country folk would want you to remove them. Eh. Oh, true! I meant to only have one leg. Did we go through with that? Maybe we didn't go through with that. Oh, wow. Cowardly sneaking past them, you see they're robots. They have your logo on the back of their necks. Oh! You made these terrorists? These monsters? They're AI terrorists? People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. That becomes relevant one of my videos. Finally, you reach the water. Fleeing the AI terrorists, you commandeer a boat to get back home. There are also families here who've been displaced by the war you're fighting. The war you started. I started a war? Five others are also trying to flee the area. They will fit in your raft, but would be illegal immigrants when returning to your country. Do you help these people, saving their lives? Or follow the law and leave them behind? Obviously you smuggle them. What are you fucking crazy? You just leave people to die because they happen to be unluckily born on the wrong bit of dirt? Get the fuck out of here. Wait, but, what, what? You should have thought about being born on better dirt, you bastards. Build yourself time machine and like relocate your parents. Nonsense. No, no, no. Uh, gotta say, easy. Especially when, as it implies, we are morally culpable for the uh, issues that they're currently experiencing in their country. They're seeking asylum, why can't it be legal? back home. Well, thank you for this. <laughs> Voters back home. I mean, yeah, certainly, um, uh, it would be legal. Yeah. You know, what is the UN law and all that stuff, uh, seeking asylum from, uh, uh, threats of violence and all that jazz, but it says here explicitly they would be illegal immigrants.
This is a very Australian problem, true. Why don't we? I fast forward because uh, you guys are meant to be thinking about it. Immigration is deep a real problem, according to the privileged. Yeah. The ideal world is one where anyone can live wherever the fuck they want. Well-meaning people should be allowed to live wherever they want to. No one chooses the dirt that they're born on. That ideal world has many problems achieving in reality. Uh, practical realities do run into that quite a bit, but uh, that is the ideal world. You get back to this great nation with fanfare. You're a hero. I guess people aren't all monsters. Hooray! Oh, it's, it's like... So this is the first time I've saved people or something? Is this like the first good one, according to the machine? The Presidential Inaugural Committee requests the honor of your presence to attend and participate in the inauguration of yourself in Central City. Well, I think I should go, I mean. It is me, after all. If you can't beat them, join them. What? Having gone through everything you have, your countrymen genuinely think a lot of you. In an unlikely turn of events, you have become president. Hey! The threat is still at large, and now you're in charge. Do you attempt to track the terrorists by spying on the entire country? The third is still large, and now you are in charge. Do you attempt to track the terrorists by spying on the entire country? To what degree am I spying on the entire country? Like, I do think there is some degree of surveillance that is allowable in society, but like, not to a ridiculous extent. Like, like what it's showing down here is drones and cameras just following literally everyone. What is this, the UK? Ah. Uh... Because it's one of those things where whatever you're creating in the government, you have to be okay with that potentially falling in the hands of people who would misuse it. Um... You need checks to prevent that, and the, but those checks might not be foolproof. It's like... You're building this security apparatus, which yes, may help you prevent harm of people in society, but it also could facilitate harm in the wrong hands. Uh, What's the issue if the public has nothing to hide? Well, no, it, it would ultimately depend on how serious the threat was. Like, if we're talking like, there are terrorists with nukes, about to kill literally everyone in in the city. Sure, you could potentially do more there, but this vague threat, which may not even really be much of a threat, I, I don't think the, the threat warrants it, you know? Aha, ignoring the issue. The first sign of a great leader. <laughs> uh... Um... Nope. So we're respecting the public privacy. I should have been reading out the option each time it was chosen. I don't think the public will be happy knowing you're doing nothing. Lucky for you, by chance, we have someone in the holding cell. So, I've hit the end of my sponsored period, and like, this is the kind of game where playing through the entire thing would be effectively the same as you playing it yourselves. So, probably better off ending it here, I think. And if you guys want to keep playing, you go buy it yourself. I don't think it's particularly expensive. Hold on. Trolley, problem, ink, steam. Apparently it's 10% off right now. Um, it is 10 bucks. So yeah, not expensive at all. 
someone said do one more. Fine, I'll do one more. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Sometimes. You have someone who potentially is linked to these threats. However, they aren't talking. As a former prisoner yourself, <laughs> what are you going to do with them? Do you torture them to get the information? Or imprison them for 90 days before letting them go? So, I'm pretty sure, definitively, torture doesn't work. As in, you are just as likely to get false information because the person is just trying to get you to stop torturing them. It doesn't matter what they know, they will just, they will not tell you what is actually true, they will just tell you whatever they think will stop you from torturing them. Uh... Additionally, we think this person has information. We don't even know. So we're going to torture a potentially innocent person and they're just going to give us literally anything they can conceive of. Which is not good. Um, I mean, imprisoning an innocent person for 90 days is not a great move, but it's a better option. And certainly, if they are involved in some immediate terrorist threat or something, 90 days of imprisonment. You them and hope they'll uh, talk. Well, no, even if they don't talk, but they'll be kept out of circulation for at least that amount of time, so they wouldn't be involved in whatever's, whatever's about to happen. And potentially we could get uh, more information that would give us a better idea as to whether they actually know anything and uh, potentially find other ways to convince them to give us that information. Uh... Yeah, by the book moment, true. This isn't indefinite detention. That would violate many national, international and human rights laws. <laughs> and torture wouldn't, though. You would just become friends with the guy. Where's the become friends option? I'm pretty sure studies suggest otherwise. Because it was in. I, I looked at some of these studies when I was doing my criminology, uh, criminology um, units. I'm pretty sure definitively torture does not work. The suspect looks pretty relaxed in their cell. Good for them. Terrorizing must really tire a person out. Oh, when I say it doesn't work, I mean balance of probabilities. Obviously, there's always going to be the possibility that torturing someone uh, does uh, elicit uh, good information. But in many cases, you're just going to torture people, innocent people, and receive information that just wastes your time. Because all they're doing is just giving you fucking anything they possibly can to get you to stop torturing them. You know? Adversity and loss make a man wise. Last one, last one. You travel to your presidential retreat at Camp Samuel. Everyone falls silent listening to the radio. Breaking news. Terrorists have launched an atom bomb towards Central City. It will hit in around one minute. One minute?! The only way in which the bomb can be prevented from reaching Central City is by deflecting it. But the only deflection path available will take the bomb onto Merriwin, population 600,000. What's, what's the population of our city? So it, we're, it's, it's, it's going here, but we're deflecting it this way. Like... I mean, this is just a bigger version of the trolley problem. And I guess you would technically do that? I'm, a, I'm going to, like, well, this city looks bigger. I'm going to assume this is more people. You, you aren't at fault here for this, this bomb being here. But it's either a lot of people die or less people die. And ultimately, it's going to be less people dying. Doing nothing is a, is effectively you're killing all these people. Doing something, you're killing all these people. It's a it's a shitty situation, uh, but you're better off killing less people. Merriwin inhabitants would want you to kill them. <laughs> they both die from radiation. I mean, potentially true. 
I mean, they're drawn very close here, but obviously they'd be further apart. Atom bombs don't explode when intercepted, intercepted, so it shouldn't in reality kill the second city. I mean... Central City can have a parade for the lost. It will be tasteful. Yeah, I mean, no in this example, it's clearly doing it, though. <laughs> Genocide, Pog. As you sow, so you shall reap. Breaking news. Terrorists atom bomb is running late and will hit Central City in one minute. One more. We have new information. The only way this bomb can be prevented from reaching Central City is by dropping one of your own atom bombs on Merriwin. What? The shockwave from your bomb will damage and disarm the terrorists. Uh. I mean... <laughs> Realistically, there is no difference here because it's stating these as facts. Obviously, in the real world, this would be different. You wouldn't know for certain that you would achieve that outcome. But in this, you do. If you picked B in the last one, you should be picking B in this one too. Um... More than this, it, it, not only are you now saving these people, but you're also damaging and disarming the terrorists, meaning that they can't do the same thing again. It's the same factors as before, but now you're also making so this can't happen again. Uh, it is uh, awful, but it's the same thing. Those people have worked their whole lives to get out of the city. What a waste. But now you're directly killing 600,000 people with your bomb. The bomb ownership doesn't matter. If you do nothing, you are killing all these people. If you do something, you are sa saving these people and killing these people. What if the bomb doesn't work? In this scenario, it is saying explicitly that it will. When the game allows for ambiguity... After this, there's no turning back. There is ambiguity. When it doesn't, there is none. It says the bomb will damage and disarm the terrorists. So... You have destroyed Merriwin. Your own AI forced your hand into killing 600,000 people. You have officially created the most successful homegrown terrorist organization in history. Great job. Thanks. Thank you. And so I will leave it here. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for hanging out. If you want to check out the game, Trolley Problem Inc., it is on Steam for like 10 bucks or something. Uh, again, this was a sponsored stream from Yogg's Cast Games. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for hanging out with me uh, as I became a terrorist. Oh, true. It says 60,000 instead of 600,000 here. That's a small error, I think. Um, have I... People killed? And I've killed 5 million people, apparently. That's fine. Um... I think it auto saves, so I mean I can come back another time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm curious actually how much of the game I played there. Let me uh, go back in, because it said last time. I couldn't figure out how to bring up the options menu at any point there.
Uh, so I was 61% through. So there's 40% more that you guys can go check out yourselves. And, uh... I don't know if... I wonder if there's multiple stories or other options in there. I'm not sure. But yeah. Bye-bye, guys.